Heavenly Father, we thank you that this morning, as we are gathered here again, Lord, all these days you have been feeding us, revealing to us the truth, and that truth is challenging us to renew our mind, change our thinking, and follow you. This morning as we are gathered, O oh Lord, yesterday you brought the testimony of King Joseph and how he was facing death. He not only overcame death, the nation overcame the enemy with fasting and praying. This morning as we are gathered, O oh Lord, you are taking us through one more character, a youth named Joseph. Lord, through the character of Joseph, through the lifestyle of Joseph, through the things that happened to Joseph, O oh Lord, teach us how we can practically apply those truths and principles in our life, even though we do not experience the situation like he experienced. But in spite of that worse situation, Lord, your favor promoted him to be the governor of Egypt. So help us to recognize the hidden secrets and mysteries Help us to see the unseen through the scriptures so that we do not get lost in our journey but go through the journey to the finishing line victorious. O oh Lord, teach us how Joseph's scars of hurts through his attitude turned scars into stars. There are many scars in our life and we want those scars to turn into stars, Lord. So teach us. Our hearts are ready to receive from you. Our ears are anointed to hear your voice, Master. Our mind ready to be renewed, changed, and transformed. So speak to us, O loving Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. So it's going to be a great journey of life of Joseph. Hallelujah. Before we start, we know that Joseph was hated. Can somebody tell me why was Joseph hated by his brothers? See, I am getting so many answers. Somebody says because the father loved Joseph more. Somebody says because the father gave him a coat. Somebody says because he had a dream. Huh? It was God's plan for his brothers to hate him. Different answers. So, we will go into the Bible and see with our own eyes why did the brothers hate him? Praise God. And once we understand why brothers hate him, then we will also understand why brothers hate us. Now all the sisters are happy because only the brothers hated Joseph. But the good news is he had no sisters. And that's, that's why it's not mentioned about the sisters because all the sisters were so happy not one sister hated him ah, he had no sisters hallelujah okay let's go to Genesis 37 was number one Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger 
in the land of Canaan, then these are the generations of Jacob, Joseph being 70 years. How, long, how old? And I believe everyone over here is uh, elder than Joseph. Except for that one baby. Rest everyone are elder to Joseph. He is only 17 years old. Was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the son of Bilah. And with the sons of Zilpah. His father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. So Joseph would be going along with his brothers and he would come and report to his, brother, uh, to his father the wrong things that his brothers did. Praise God. Now, when you bring the wrong things of what others do, will they love you? Then why did Joseph always bring the negative report, which was true, the brothers did that, and he would bring and report to his father? Why? He loved his brother so much that he believed that the father had the authority to correct them and when they were tender, if the correction is made, it would be good for the future. That's why he would bring the evil report only to the one who had the authority to correct. Do you sometimes carry some evil report of people? And whom do you go and report to? Hello? Do we carry evil report of one another? And do we a report to the one who can make the correction or we report to everybody and especially those whom we love too much? Hello? I'm asking you. So the attitude of Joseph was not to harm his brothers, but the attitude of, his brother, of Joseph was that his brothers needed correction. And correction is not acceptable, easy. Hallelujah. And that's why his brothers did not like that. Hallelujah. Okay, then, then. Now Israel, that is Jacob, loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he had made him a coat of many colors. Praise God. Was Jacob an anointed man of God? Come on. Now, he loved Joseph more. Now, there it says because he was a, a son of an in his old age, but there was something good about Joseph was that he was always obedient to his father. So when the son is always submissive to his father, their love is more. He was not a rebel. Praise God. But is it right for his father to love his son more than others? What happens is when children are small, and the father loves the son or the mother loves the son and doesn't give the same love to the daughter. Possible? Yes. When, when the son says something, I need this, no problem. When the daughter says, I need this thing, can't be done. Possible? So, during such time, the parents have already planted a seed of division and hatred in the lives of children and when these children grow up they will never be united because those seeds have been planted by the parents that's why Jesus always says love one another uh, love your enemies why is he saying that because the seeds of hatred will bring uh, will bring division disunity and demonic spirits that will destroy the family hallelujah now always remember 
when a person is anointed and that person loves somebody that person anointing will always impart to that somebody anointing flows where there is love anointing does not flow where there is no love so god expects the parents to love all the children so that everyone receives the blessings of god through the parents to the children hallelujah that's why when a person is anointed and the more and more he loves the people the more and more there is impartation but if the same anointed person does not love anybody he has blocked the anointing from flowing to the next person i'll give you the secret that i learned when i would see the priest who blessed me who helped me to come out of deliverance i would love him no matter what love him and the more and more i loved him after some time i begin to realize what he is doing i am able to do the same then i began to see a preacher on the tv and i like the way he t- began to teach i began to love him but there were many articles written ag- uh, against him and when i would read it the first line i would not go to the other lines because words are seeds and once the seed goes in it's difficult to uproot so anything negative about him i would quickly delete and after some days i began to understand the way he preaches i also got the same anointing i began to realize the more and more i love i can download the anointing the more and more i love others the more and more i can upload or give them the anointing the more and more i look at some people who are anointed i can download the anointing it's a connection now what did jacob do jacob is anointed a father but he is releasing the anointing ignorantly only on joseph and not the others and because of which the others are getting more and more evil and that's why in the ministry it's very important any any person who is doing a ministry any person who is doing a ministry if that person has compassion for the poor for the broken that ministry can never be stopped by the devil because because wherever there is compassion wherever there is love there is god because god is love and when god shows up devil has no defense against love you might be preaching all the fantastic revelations but there is no love the people will come listen but there will be no change much but when a person is preaching and loving people love begins to set people free i remember in one place in those days i used to have bible classes i would be preaching in bombay goa in mangalore in different places and one day i read there is a spiritual fire anointing retreat in bangalore and the preachers are international preachers now i had only seen it on tv so i wanted to experience an international preacher so i did not see anything on that one ad i told my students from bombay let's go to bangalore i told my students from goa let's go to bangalore let from mangalore let's go to bangalore and when we went for the retreat we were more than the total retreatants 
Are you, are you understanding? Hallelujah. And when the preacher came to preach, I thought he might be from Africa, from America, from somewhere. And he's, I saw a person with the same skin like mine. And I began to wonder. And then I realized, when an Indian goes outside, he's called as an international preacher. I did not know that. So you are also international? Listen, listen, listen. I did not know that. I did not know that. Okay. So the retreat got over. And we were all, I was packing up everybody. So the Bombay people were in one. Their trip was different. Goa trip was different. Manglo trip was different. All the other trip was different. So everybody said bye bye. And a Goa bus was waiting. Because the bus was full, full of us. And all of a sudden I heard screaming and shouting. And I began to wonder what happened. And I ran in that direction. I'm supposed to run in the direction of the bus because the bus is waiting only for me. And I forget the bus and I run in that direction where there is screaming. And when I go there, there is one youth. He is surrounded by all people from the ministry. And they are screaming and trying to get the demon out. Because this boy, this youth is suddenly becoming like a lion. Exactly like a lion walking the same way, growling. Suddenly he will become like a horse and all this and anybody was coming close he would come to attack And the screaming was going on and I was watching there And I said God what do I do? Tell me what do I do? And I heard the Lord saying go and hug him ah, Lord <laughs> These many people are all around him And anyone who comes close to that person that boy he is attacking and you want me to hug him and he said if you trust me go and hug him and you don't even have to do anything just whisper in his ears that I love him that's all that's all so I said Lord I'm ready to step out you are going to back me up so I got into the ring one step he looks at me I look at him after some time I go a little further and he looks at me that I'm not coming to attack him but I'm coming with compassion and he and he is looking at me I'm looking at you we come together opposite each other and I grab him and I hug him and I start weeping and I say Jesus loves you and he screams and says I love Satan I hate Jesus I love Satan I hate Jesus and I said God never created Jesus never created you to hey, love Satan oh yes I love Satan and I said you know what Satan is scared of his eternity because he's going to uh, be in hell and Jesus doesn't want you to be there that's why he sent me to tell you that he loves you no matter what you have experienced in your life he's, he is he's willing to forgive you and clean you up and give you a new life Jesus loves you and I love you and he went on screaming and screaming and screaming till he collapsed on my chest as if he became lifeless and slowly slipped down and everybody were wondering what happened after two minutes he opened his eyes gave me a smile and said I'm free I said, if you are free, then say, Jesus Christ is my Lord. And he said, Jesus Christ is not only my Lord, he is my Savior, he is my salvation, and I belong to him, I am born again. That's the time the Lord began to teach me that the more and more love, mercy and compassion, the greater is the anointing. And then he began to show me that when I was in school, there used to be teachers who used to throw the duster, who would throw the chalk and the class would still be making noise. 
and there were some teachers they were full of love they were very full of love even the naughty boy would be silent and if anybody misses the most naughty fellow would even say don't trouble her come on because we were all the trouble makers but there were some teachers we would never allow anybody to mess with her because that love changed us hallelujah thank you jesus so jacob has compassion and love towards one that's why jesus says we who have received love are supposed to love one another why because when a person hates you and you turn around and love that person that anointing in you attacks the spirit of hatred and destroys it but when we go into our emotions when somebody hates us especially unjustly then quickly comes out of us a spirit of hatred that wants to take revenge and that's the fallen human nature by default but we are not supposed to live by our fallen human nature because that has been crucified on the cross we are supposed to live by the new nature of Christ that God has given to us as a gift amen amen, amen? amen. so can we just close our eyes and if I, you are the person who has got love for one and love no love for the other now is the time to tell the lord lord thank you for revealing this to me i ask you lord to please forgive me i ask you lord to cancel the the spirit of partiality the spirit of hatred the spirit of disunity lord uh, and give me the grace to forgive and give me the grace to ask forgiveness oh lord and let it be genuine oh lord so that i'm able to love everybody and impart all that you have given me in the lives of others teach me lord not to judge people according to their performance but teach me to love others the way you love me thank you jesus just as the rain has come over here lord your anointing your anointing your anointing your anointing comes on everyone setting everyone free setting everyone free setting everyone free yes lord you are anointing you are anointing you are anointing you are anointing that removes the burden that destroys the yoke of the devil breaks the yoke right now right now right now right now right now thank you jesus 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 hallelujah ओ ला बाखा दा राखा दे दे के दे ले का दा बाखा सी दा रोखो दे ले खे ले ले का ला बा दा राखा दे दे का दा बा सी दा राखा दो रोखो दो राखा दे ले का ला दे का दी बा दा रोखो दो रुबे दे ले का दा राखा दे ले के ला बा दा राखा दा रबे दे ले को दे ले का ला रे को चा बा दो दो को दे ले का रे बा दो रोखो दे दी बे का दा रोखो दे रखा बा दा रोखो दे जा बा दा रोखो दा बा सी दा रोखो दा दा बे दे हालेलुया Hallelujah 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 In fact if we understand that scripture then those who hurt us are supposed to be loved more than those who love us because when we love those who hate us and hurt us then the anointing from you is going to bring a change in their life Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Loud. Uh, the past uh, one day, yesterday, I was sharing with Brother Johnson that I am having a rough relation with my dad. and today morning uh, yesterday night only uh, brother jo johnson told like you talk to your dad and tell that i love you and i was just feeling myself throughout the night with the holy spirit that let not me speak but you speak and you fill me with that love and just before the breakfast when i was i just called my dad 
and I told her I love him. I did not have this conversation with him ever in my lifetime. And the response that he gave me back was amazing. And I would tell you, though it was two, two minutes conversation, the whole life I did not have that conversation where we, he is telling me that I, he loves me back and come back soon home. And it was always a rough edge. It was always a fight in within. Though we know we love each other, we could not tell it. But I could not tell to my dad also with the love that I have. It was only like, you know, yeah, I love you. I mean, just for the sake of telling I love you, I tell you. But this time, I was just filling myself with the Lord. Lord, you fill me with my, your love. And let me speak to my dad. And I spoke. And I could actually feel that he is filled with the emotions. And he's filled with the change. And I was filled with the love first time for my dad after so many years. Ha <laughs> ha! Now will you do one more thing? Yeah. The moment you see him, grab him and, and forget what age you are. Become the law, small baby and hold him so tight and don't let him go. He will break down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's happening, baby. It's happening. It's happening in everybody's life. This retreat is very different. This, 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 this anointing is, is breaking the yoke of the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why when you understand the truth, the truth will set you free. It's happening. The love is flowing. Hey, the love is flowing. You can love the person who hurt you so much because you are loaded with Jesus' love. And Jesus said, I filled you with my love so that you can go and hug somebody and pour that love into somebody. Hey, we, are a, we got a river flowing, a river flowing, a river flowing. And that river is going to bring all breakdown of the devil. There's a river flowing, man. I've got a very good statement that I always say to myself. What others do to me is not my business. It's between them and God. What I do to them is my main business. And my main business is to love them, not looking at their performance. So what is Christianity? Christianity is to love somebody not based on the other person's performance. Loving somebody the way Jesus loved me. <laughs> hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Love is flowing in this room. Hey, love, 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 love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's why in the ministry, we must be extremely like a soldier. The more people hurt, hurt us, the more people hate us, the more people speak against us, the more you go and love them. This dog is alive. If I touch him, normally, today, what happened? <laughs> From the last few days, then she would, correct? But what about a dead dog? You go and kick the dead dog, throw stone, give some gali, do what you want. The dead dog never barks, never chases, and Christians are dead dogs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
So what is our journey every day? Our journey every day is how do I train this mind to be like a dead dog? And the more and more we become like a dead dog, the more and more you will encounter Jesus and the glory of God moves through you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, four. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, is it a good atmosphere where everybody in the house hates you? Now remember, we have been listening to this uh, scripture Brother Vijay spoke, I spoke, sister spoke God works all things together for All things together for So remember, all those bad things have happened in your life They never are wasted they are always going to be put into use in the future. They never go wasted. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you are going through some negative thing right now, it's God preparing you for something big. Because when you go there, you got to have lots and lots of practice to sustain the pressure there and that's why he's training you right now where you are because that's not your state that's not the place that God has designed for you that's only the work in progress that's only the place where God is preparing you and he wants to take you so high that's beyond your imagination <laughs> hallelujah but many people when they look at this state they make it their fate when they look at this state they say this is my fate and they allow all the negative emotions to come over them and they become prisoners of their own emotion and they are never able to come out because they have already made up in their mind this is my fate The definition of uh, uh, success is there is going to be a season of preparation then it's going to be a season of opportunity and when the opportunity comes or when the pressure comes the preparation that God had dealt with you the last 10 days he wants to see how are you going to respond in this opportunity of good things or bad things or worse things he wants to see you are you going to respond the way I prepared you then he's going to give you success These 10 days for us is a days of preparation. Because after you leave from this place, everything that you have learned is going to be tested. And then when the test comes and you are going to look into your notebook and you are going to say, Hey, this is what God wants me to do. I am going to change my thinking. I am going to put it into practice. And when you do it again and again and again, it becomes a new habit. And that new habit becomes your lifestyle. It becomes your character. Now God says, come with me. Let me take you to the next class. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So even if they would talk to him, they would talk with fire. They would talk with poison. They would talk with hatred. And Joseph was on the receiving side. In spite of all that, his attitude was still love. Hallelujah. Let's go to the fifth point, fifth scripture. Joseph dreamed a dream. Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it to his brothers. And they, and they 
hated him yet the more yes the father loved him they had hatred but to a certain degree but when he went and told them the dream in which god is going to make him great much superior than them that brought hatred hallelujah there are two kinds of people who will come into your dream they in in your life when you go around telling your dream there will be two kinds of people there will be one set of people who will hate you and they want to kill the dream and there will be other set of people who will be uh, looking at your dream and saying i want to join with you to fulfill the dream hallelujah so there are dream haters and the dream uh, lovers or uh, they will come to help you praise god so i had made a dream i did not know whom to go and talk god brought those who are supposed to be connected to the dream and they came into my life and they were the ones who brought their resources and brought the dream to pass in the same way when you have made a dream looking at those scriptures and you're praying in tongues and you're visualizing and when you go and speak to some people and those who are not supposed to be with you they will hate your dream be careful to whom you talk you about your dream hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. thank you jesus thank you jesus so so every time a believer makes a dream on the promise of god the devil hates him because the devil knows if a believer has to make a dream using the scriptures it's going to shake his kingdom and torment his kingdom and destroy his kingdom and that's why he's all the time looking around who is he who is making some dreams from the scriptures because he is a threat to his kingdom hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus can you write some points please joseph had a dream and please please i beg you these notes study them so well put it in your life so well that when i meet you next time you will have a big list of testimonies to share because you now know how to go into the battle hallelujah i'll give you a simple question a simple example a simple example there are many who are sitting here who are saying um, people hate me i want to ask you let's say you are walking on the street with two of your friends and there are some men like me with a scarf and looking at you and you are three and one has got a thin gold chain the second one has got a little bigger thicker and the third one has got chain with diamonds and all that and thick like a you can tie this dog with that chain now out of the three who do you think i will attack the one with the thin very good huh the one with the diamonds why do you think i'm at, i'm trying to get that chain because that is more value than the others why do you think satan is mad after you <laughs> why do you think satan is mad about you because he knows the kind of stuff that god has put in you long many years back i said god why is everywhere i go i get 
he gave me this example and from that day I'm laughing and I'm saying now I know why the devil is crazy he wants to get the diamonds that God has put in me and he's not getting my stuff it is my inheritance hallelujah hallelujah now when somebody when Satan uses somebody are you going to get depressed or are you going to say ah, coming for my diamonds huh? <laughs> look at Ruiz oh my god you're smiling man wow praise God okay write down Joseph had a dream and when he told it to his brothers and when he told it to his brothers they hated him even more they hated him even more Genesis 37 verse 5 Joseph was 17 years old just a teenager just a teenager might be he did not know might be he did not know what the promise fully meant and all that he was going through and all that he was going to have he did not know what the promise fully meant what the promise fully meant and all that he was going and all that he was going to have to endure going to have to endure in the space in the space in the space between the promise and the performance hallelujah don't we become happy when somebody gives us a good prophetic message <laughs> but <laughs> before that prophetic message can come there is always going to be a tough journey where the Lord is going to take us and he wants to see us whether we are able to endure all that Joseph had a dream he did not know how that dream would come through and what the dream really meant he did not even know what he's going to go and endure but one thing he knew that God is making me somebody great hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus how many abortions do we have how many abortion did you have none you are saying I'm not even married I'm not talking about those abortion I'm talking about the dream and the message abortion and when something opposite happened and instead of enduring with patience and with joy and peace we open our mouth grumble and complain and get angry and if anybody has to see us then they will say is he the same Christian my wife will always say to me if people knew who you are at home I don't think anybody will come then I began to practice on that praise God hallelujah we are Christians better outside isn't it I, I'm talking about myself I don't know about others are we better Christians inside or outside but look at Joseph he is better inside outside anywhere his mindset 
his attitude is the same okay do you want your dream to come true yeah so let me sh show you the formula that jesus gives us the formula the formula by which these dreams can come true in people's life and if we don't follow that formula there is abortion okay give me mark chapter 4 verse 26 and jesus said so is the kingdom of god in other words this is how the kingdom of god operates this is how the principle is this is how the law is in the kingdom of god as if a man should 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 cast a seed into the ground then and then he should go to sleep he's laughing and then he should go to then he should go to hold on, hold on. he should go to please tell your neighbor go to sleep without frustration has, has anybody has anybody ever gone to sleep listen 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 has anybody ever gone to sleep with bitterness yes. anger and offense yes abortion has already taken place jesus said when you cast that seed i need you to do only one thing please go to sleep with joy and peace believing in that seed that you have planted i will make it sprout and grow but when things don't happen the way i want because i planted a good seed but it's not happening everything is coming against me so out of me comes anger and that's why he says oh, all i need you to do is when you go uh, when you have planted a seed of faith please go to sleep don't think about the seed just go to sleep and rise sleep at night rise during the day and do what do all the responsibility that you have to do but in love and when you do that he says the seed should spring the farmer doesn't go and put something into the seed to make it sprout he is only putting water and protecting from the birds that's all the lord has put the power in the seed that will make it sprout and grow up what are the seed go to sleep rise up during the day do all the responsibility that god has given you don't bother about the seed the seed will sprout and grow up and he knows not how now did joseph plant the seed oh yeah he planted the seed when he got the dream he did not forget the dream he spoke about it all the time he's watering the seed he's watering the seed and when he's watering the seed his brothers are hating him and and and, and doing all kinds of nasty things against him it could have been an abortion if he had a negative attitude can you ask your neighbor when was the last time you had a negative attitude how many years back some of them are saying yesterday when we did not get hot water and here my brothers are saying you promised us that you will get the gas from there to the men's and today you cancel the attitude is negative so quickly the abortion takes place see when you read that passage of joseph you are saying wow god did this and god did that yes god for god to do very important what's my response to what god has promised me he knows not 
how the big problem for us is we always want to know how and when you want to know how you are in the flesh and when you are saying lord i don't know how but i'm going to depend on you i'm going to believe in you i'm going to trust in you i'm going to step out in faith and i'm going to keep my attitude on you my eyes fixed on you and when my eyes are fixed on you no abortion yes lord i may endure some difficulties but that doesn't mean that's the end of my journey when i went to africa 300 kilometers beautiful road 150 kil kilometers uh, dusty road all the nut bolts are praise god so i will say lord i wanted a smooth journey and he says no there are sometimes and thank god it did not rain if it had to rain when we were traveling my god we don't know what would have happened it's a, it's a muddy road and when the rain comes the 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 car might be going uh, uh, like a skating so there is going to be a journey of endurance the endurance doesn't mean the end of the dream it means work in progress don't abort your dream hey don't abort your dream don't abort your dream praise god what did you write the last line okay it took 13 years in bracket capital letters only because even in the check we write no big amount and then only so it took how many years for the dream to get fulfilled 13 years but the fine but the promise finally came to pass but the promise it took him 13 years 13 years but the promise finally came to pass joseph went on a journey that took him that took him from his father's house into the pit into the pit and from there to potiphar's house as a slave and from there into the prison into the prison and from there to the palace and from there to the palace for for that was destined please underline that destined for him that was destined for him praise the lord so are we destined to go through some valleys yes and when you are in the valley can you see the dream come true hello when god takes you through some valley journey can you see your dream come true because everything that happened to joseph in the natural it looked like the dream is over once a slave would die a slave and from slave to a prison which is lifetime imprisonment can he ever come out just because you can't see with your natural eyes doesn't mean that god is not going to give you if he has told you something he is surely going to bring it to pass but before that am i ready to go through a journey of endurance and patience should i change the topic because i look at you all very depressed i get excited with joseph
If you see some things wrong in me, my friend, don't get angry. I am going through the endurance period, but I am not aborting the dream. Wait till my God finishes. It's not yet reached the finish line. I am still work in progress. Thanks. Please God. Please God. Uh, this is the beautiful <laughs> sister of mine. Creation of Christ Jesus. Uh, this is the beautiful sister of mine, the wife of Brother Alred. <laughs> I, 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 she got the same anointing of pinching. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. As Brother was uh, sharing and explaining and giving us the understanding on this topic, uh, I just remembered. I think uh, I, w I was not prepared. I am just led to share. So I don't know how I'm going to reach to the point, but I'm sure the Lord will guide me and lead me into this. Okay. Now, um, when we first started our journey, when I came from Goa to uh, from Mumbai to Goa, okay, to start the Lord journey, when we received the truth, okay. In the beginning when we lived, we just lived a normal life, a normal Christian, not the, a born again Christian. So when we received the truth, we came to Goa and for almost uh, three or four years, do you want to sit? Sit. You want to sit? No, 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 I'm standing yeah. beside you. Almost for three to four years, I always wanted to run away from Goa. Because when I first came here, my first child was just two and a half years and she had not started school yet. Okay? So as her, she started getting closer to her uh, um, uh, school going age, okay, that's, I that's felt Dalia, that's, Dalia. that's Dalia who's helping out in the sound. Okay? So, um, so I did not want her to study in Goa. I wanted her a good base. Okay, so since I was from Mumbai, I felt no, 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 I don't think she'll get a good base here. She has to have her base in Mumbai. So I tried my level best to convince Brother Johnson and Alred. They were a part of this because we had just started. During those days, we had just started with house meetings. Okay, we had just started with house meeting and this was Brother Johnson's vision that time. To have a uh, home for the alcoholics and the drug addicts and a house for you guys <laughs> who are enjoying now okay so i you are enjoying in the presence of the lord yes. yes okay so this is what was happening and every time i just wanted to i i would tell them i want to go back i want to go back because you want I, to go back to no Kuwait. mumbai to mumbai no, no. okay okay First so, it was Kuwait, then it became Bombay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we wanted to, I wanted to go to Mumbai. So every time I would tell, tell them like, you know, I have to go. Give me just five years, I would say, just five years. Just the base for my children and then I bring them and I put them in any of the schools in Goa. Not an issue. Okay. And then, you know, they would convince me. And I would get convicted only because they would give me word. Okay. Okay, and then I would meditate and then I would say, yes, Lord, you do want to want me to be the one to put asunder to what you have put together. Listen. Because the family has to be together. Yeah. Now, even though she sh she's sharing this, I'll tell you, it's not easy, even though the scripture is given. Do you think the commentator will keep quiet? The commentator will keep on speaking. So, the battle is where? Inside our mind. One side the commentator is saying, what are you listening to these two jokers? These two jokers are not thinking about your baby. You are the mother. You don't think about your baby. Who will think? The joke, the, the, the commentator is talking a lot of things. And on the other side, the scripture also is talking. Yeah, so and I want to tell you, if she is sharing this two minutes, no. You should have seen the torture in her mind. My God. <laughs> there used to be fumes coming out. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. But she went through yeah. enduring. That's very important. It's 
a choice you make in life. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Whether That's you want to here. follow Christ, who is the peace and life, okay, or you want to follow your uh, carnal mind, which is only going to head you towards destruction. Okay, so I managed to. So every time I would listen to the two voices speaking to me and then um, the scripture would come saying, Pia, do not put us under to what I have put together. But Lord, I am not talking about divorce. <laughs> okay, this is what I would speak in return. Say, no, I want you to be together. I want you to be together. Okay, so the strength is there because I want the Holy Trinity to be together. <laughs> Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Okay mother father and the children so i would submit i would submit and it went on till i had to put my child into one of the schools here in chubby chicks okay which i was not at all comfortable with but then i said fine lord because the lord also said not by might not by power but by my spirit he said okay he said i am going to do it for you i am going to do it for you I said, Lord, when? She's already admitted in school and I'm not happy. Okay, I'm not happy. And then every time I would trouble Brother Johnson and Alred. I said, I have to go, I have to go. Till, you know, when she was in the third grade, the Lord brought a wonderful syllabus into existence in our life. Okay, which was God-oriented. It was the same system way, okay, they had the same subjects, okay, where we learn English, science, social studies, okay, math, everything included, but everything was God-oriented. Everything was connected to the Lord. Like in a normal uh, geography class in the system school, if the teacher enters a geography class, she will say, children, today we shall learn about the earth. But well, as my children were taught, today we, shall, we will learn about God's earth. So everything was connected to God. Okay? Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So when I got that syllabus, I was very happy. But it was not... Uh, 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 it was and nothing not to established in Goa. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. It is a very... Uh, what do you say? It's an international not accepted, syllabus. Not accepted... In the Indian. In, 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 in India. In India. Okay? If you take that certificate... Because yeah. our certificate is what yeah. which study, no? Yeah. Shivaji yeah. died in which year? And Aurangzabad was born in which year? That certificate is accepted. Yes. But Jesus <laughs> died on the cross. That's Only accepted there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so then I had to make a choice whether I take this and get my children out of the system and put them in God's system. So I got my brothers to study the syllabus and there were many of them who got involved and they gave me a go, okay? After a go, we set up, I got my children and we also got few parents who are convicted, okay? Who are convinced, I mean, who are convinced and uh, they also got their children. But then started the journey, the process which the Lord, which brother was explaining to us. Hmm? Yeah, the, 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 the. The, what was that word you used? Space. 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 Between the performance. <laughs> yeah, the space. So it was a hectic journey for many years now. Okay. The teachers were not able to digest what we were doing because we were not affiliated with the a system from where the syllabus came, neither we were affiliated anywhere here in India and we were just like crazy people putting our children in a mess, okay? So the teachers wouldn't get convinced and I had a lot of issues, so I did not know how to tell them, you know, that this is our decision for our children and many things, the process. Another thing that um, Brother Aldred and Pia had made up a decision is, that my children will serve the Lord. Yeah. Like Joshua said, as for me and my family, we shall serve the Lord. So if they are supposed to serve the Lord, why not they learn the syllabus right from childhood? The Bible is their test book. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. So, so, so my children will serve the Lord. So even if they do any education, ultimately they will serve the Lord. Yeah. So let them have the test book from childhood with this, where they will learn the attitudes, they will learn the, the standard of God God's and when they are built up at this young age, then when they grow, 
they will be practicing what they learnt all these years. Yeah. And then uh, my child studied up to ninth grade, the um, Canadian uh, syllabus, and then we needed some certification for her, okay, so that she could continue her uh, degree, her college in the system way. And she studied last year. She gave her tenth grade uh, examination. You know, she went through quite a pressure. Quite a pressure because what the Canadian syllabus teaches them is, you know, to use their thinking, not to just mug up and, you know, just go and answer and then forget about whatever you have written in your papers. It's all about just clearing the class. But they were not doing that. But here, because I needed the certification, she had to switch from the system, uh, from the Canadian syllabus to the system. And it was quite a pressure for her, you know, to. Um, uh, to, to know the Indian way because we did not know that she would have to go through that pressure so we did not prepare her from the lower classes to face this although we had already decided that she would do her 10th uh, her, uh, grade through the system way through the, the certificate yeah so we were deceived by the deceiver he is always there you know so we were deceived and we did not prepare her but since this child has been obedient from childhood she took the pressure you know she took the pressure and uh, she passed in flying colors she got distinction this year praise god praise god praise god and our school thing is still on okay still on still the dream the vision is not yet aborted so i asked her what are you doing now yeah so she said i still continue to study about Jesus and also the other subjects so that I, I just as Jocelyn uh, she did not want to do a masters and I said listen baby the world recognizes the certificate just to get the access once you are inside you use the Bible no problem no problem but at least you, you, you need the paper to show them I'm one like you from outside but once I come inside I'm going to shine with the light of the gospel. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So please write down. And please, if possible, write it in capital letters because I don't want you to miss these truths. These are amazing truths. God does not speak. God does not speak. to where you are God does not speak to where you are He speaks He speaks to where He desires for us to be He speaks to where He desires for us to be So when you, when you get those promises, like Jocelyn said one beautiful truth yesterday, when I look at those promises that God is talking to me through the CD, and when I look at myself, there's a fight going on in my mind because the commentator, the devil, is giving a running commentary and I had to make a decision and I said, from now on I'm not going to see me the way I see with my eyes, but I'm going to see me the way God sees me with his eyes. In the same way Joseph began to see himself the way God had seen him in the final destination and not where he is right now. The devil wants you to see where you are right now. The devil wants you to keep your eyes fixed on where God has promised you to take you. Are you understanding? Read that again. God does not speak to where we are, but He speaks where He desires for us to be. Now when Brother Eldred said, I read that scripture in Joshua, as for me and my family will serve the Lord, and he said, as for me and my children will serve the Lord. And he said to me, Brother, I am a graduate. He said, I'm a graduate, I'm also a graduate. Yes, the certificate helped us, but today what we are living 
is not what the certificate taught us we are living what the Bible taught us today if all the resources that have come into our life when we got broke down in this world did not come from what we learned there it's coming from what we learned over here other things everybody claps these things there is a fight going in your mind and the commentator is saying to you oh, hold on how can it be if you and I are sitting here in this place all the bills are not paid by the knowledge that this world gives us the bills are paid by the knowledge that comes from the word of God That's why in God's kingdom, you need guts to believe. You need guts to believe, brother. And the devil, the commentator, when somebody is walking in that faith, the commentator begins to irritate all those around you. They come and bark because they want to kill your dream. And that's why you got to be uh, confident in the person whom you know. His name is Jesus. And if he said something, he is faithful. It's we who are not faithful. How do you define God's brother? When you step out like she stepped out. Like yesterday, there were many who have, who have problems when they have bath in cold water. They, they catch cold. One sister said, I catch sinus only with the fan. So forget about the water. But yesterday everyone were triggered by the word of God and they made a decision I'm going to step out in faith and when they stepped out in faith this morning they came smiling and there was no quarrel as well I go first I want this that now it was so easy everybody were ready to adjust hallelujah write down write down all capital letters please these are all capital letters because this is what we practice every day. God will show you. God will show you your destination. God will show you your destination. But you must be prepared. But you must be prepared for all that for all that you will have to endure please put it in capital letters color it paste it put some lipstick on it do whatever you want praise God but let that word endure be right before your eyes uh, repeat okay I, I don't mind repeating the whole day but you must be prepared for all no 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 don't miss any word for all that you will have to endure because we are ready to endure some things which we are comfortable no problem but some things don't you even touch me there because I have hidden it and it's deep down don't you touch it because the moment you scratch it I come out like a bulldog The other area is no problem, but you don't touch me there. I'm very sensitive in that area. Better don't touch it, because if you touch it and you scratch me there, I will not spare you. God wants to deal with you in that area. Because that area is your block, which is taking, which is stopping you to reach to your destination. We learned when, when such negative things are deep down in a heart, your heart is blocked. Can you ask your neighbor, is your heart blocked? Nurses, if the heart is blocked, how will the blood circulation be? Free or with some problem? Problem. Now, what will be the symptom of a person? The person gets tired, the person gets giddy, the person gets pain, the person starts sweating. 
I have not done nursing, but I know all these things. Praise God. And a person might even get a stroke. So when a person is angry and barking, there's a block in your heart. And no doctor in this world can operate you. Only Jesus, when you come to him and tell him, deal with this block. Get me out. I'm not against you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So did you write that? Be prepared. Be prepared. What's the meaning of be prepared? Be prepared means if I tell him now, we want tea now, he's not prepared. Be prepared means I'm saying in 10 minutes we want tea. He's not going to wait till the break takes off. Even when we are talking, he's already working. In the same way, be prepared means work in your mind. Renew your mind. Train your mind that when that sensitive area opens up, you are ready to overcome every evil with good. Oh. If somebody says, I'm a Christian, then the, the, then the litmus test is when something bad happens to you, how do you respond? Because if you are a Christian, you are confessing, I overcome every evil with good. And if you are able to overcome evil with good, why do you abort with grumbling and complaining and murmuring and screaming and scratching and... Can't be disclosed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you must be prepared for all that you will have, all, 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 all that you will have to endure in the space between the promise and the performance. In the space between the promise and the performance. That's what is very important, work in progress. Brother Anthony, you're not writing? Because Daniel is sitting on you. Huh? Danny, come on, move. Let him write. It's good to take a child and hug him. But there is a season when something important is there. You tell the child, sit down there. Let me finish. Let me first prepare this because this is going to change my future let me prepare that's what prepare prepare when you're writing the notes hey brother you ask me what is prepare you're writing the notes why are you writing the notes you're writing the notes that when I get the recess when I get the break I sit with it and I talk to my God and I say this is the area you got to deal with me because it's a block and I want you to get it out prepare a preparation is a season of hard work You must be prepared for all that you will have to endure in the space between the promise and the performance. So if you are saying, God, I want the manifestation, you're saying, are you ready to endure? And you might say, let my neighbor endure, Lord, but give me the manifestation. Let my dada endure, Lord, but give me the manifestation. Now what did you say in this retreat? Lord, I'm willing to endure. What happened to the relationship? And you said, it's amazing. And did you, didn't you find it was so easy? You know, when you renew your mind, you begin to wonder, when it was so easy, what a fool I've been all this time, fighting with my dad. All those negative emotions, talking all the negative things. But did you see how many beautiful things your dad has? Hey, Mr. Perfect, who is getting angry? I want you to, you to see your own life. Are you Mr. Perfect? So, Jesus, who is perfect, how does he look at us with compassion? There are many Mr. Perfects and Miss Perfects sitting here. Hi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The 
class has become very serious. You know how much the Lord is making ways to reach us to our destination and the commentator comes, irritates us, we open our mouth, blah, 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 blah. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. How many of you have played a game in your life? At least once. One, that game. Which game? No, no, I, I'm talking about my, the game that I'm talking about. How many of you have played a game called Snake and Ladder? Hello, has anybody played Snake and Ladder? And there is that last place, home. Okay, and at 99 that big snake is there. And at 96 that another snake is there. And at 92 another snake is there. And you are dodging and you are saying, God, let me not be beaten by that snake. In that game, it depends on luck. But in this game that Joseph is saying, it's not your luck, man. Even though there was so much all around me, I was enduring everything, taking those punches, but I kept my mouth shut and I kept praising God and I endured everything. I reached the home. We are scared of this snake. But that snake biting us, we are so used to that biting that just as people are drug addicts, we are snake bite addicts. Ask your neighbor, when was the last time the snake bit you? And which one bit you, the small one or the big one? It's so good the two wives sitting together holding hands and giggling. You know, two ladies sitting together, holding hands, I don't know what they spoke, but they both are vibrating and while laughing. I did not know what was so much that others were laughing, but they were totally in, like they had been put on a vibration machine. It should have been something strong, man. Thank God, what an example Jesus is giving, Holy Spirit is giving, snakes and ladder. And when you endure, there is a ladder. When you endure, there is a ladder. Ask your neighbor, when, did, when was the last time you climbed the ladder? Now, now if somebody said, uh, what did you learn in these 10 days of retreat? We were playing snakes and ladder. And the preacher was teaching us how to avoid the snake bite and get into the ladder and reach the destination not what we want but what was set by God and that's what is called the dreamer. I'm a 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 dreamer but willing to endure all that comes the way because my eyes is fixed on that home isn't your eyes fixed on that home and if and if it is not a friendly snakes and ladder i don't know whether you would play the friendly one or the the fight one the fight one is when my chip goes and sits on your chip you go back into the prison you were on 10 and i was on 8 if i get 2 I come on 10 and you go back into the prison where you wait for that 6 to come out. Might be you all were playing the friendly game. We always like to play the fight game. But in those days we used to fight with people. But now we have learned how to fight with the devil and not with people. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is taking us back into childhood days and through childhood days he's teaching us what a game are we playing every day so now I understand Christianity is nothing but a game of snakes and ladder and the more scriptures you know the number keeps on going the people who don't know the scriptures they are still sitting in the same place what's the dice the scriptures when you do what the scripture says, you go in front. 
and when you endure the one which is the toughest one he puts you on a ladder number 21 which goes directly right into the 80s you will say how does he know all these numbers because i played that game over and over and over and now when i learn to play this game i know over and over and over where's the ladder and where's the snake Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I spoke about snake and ladder, now all of you became fresh. Praise God. Write down, write down. Today it is full about writing. You don't mind writing? Yeah. Though the vision tarries, though the vision tarries, wait for it those of vision theories wait for it because because it will surely come to pass because it will surely come to pass habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 to 4 habakkuk chapter 2 2 to 4 now some of you will say, brother, Joseph had a dream, people have visions, I don't have dreams, I don't have visions. Let me tell you, even I don't have visions, when people see visions, I keep telling the Lord, Lord, why is it that I'm not seeing anything? I close my eyes for hours together and say, now Lord, give me some vision and I don't see, I don't see, I don't see, I don't see, I don't see. And it reminds me of an experience that happened in my life. We had gone to a particular retreat center and a lot of my friends were there and the retreat began. The first day, somebody in the group, that person's name was called and a message was given. Do you know what happened to that person? The moment the message was given and we came back to our room, this person's chest and arms were so big. Hey, my name was called. And we were all looking. That time we were baby Christians. We were all looking. And we were all praying, God, call my name. Second day, some other people's names were called. When two days went by, I would go at night, skip when everybody would be sleeping and go into the stairs and sit there and pray, tomorrow God call out my name. Six days went, my name was not called. Last, the mass was going on, the mass got over and the name was called. But the name was called was not Johnson but John Stan. And I have never heard a person name with a John Stan. And I thought, the priest must have made a mistake. And I was about to stand, just three rows in front, one man stood up. His name was John Stan. <laughs> My heart broke. I literally cried. And those whose names were called, they kept looking at us as we were worse sinners. I came back crying. After some days, I forgot. Thank God, my brother said, Brother, you got an anointing of forgetting. Thank you, brother Vijay. Some things which are painful, I forget quickly. Thank God for that. Hallelujah. Thank God. After years, I was reading the Bible and the Lord showed me the disciples said, we have seen the Lord, he has risen. And Thomas said, unless I see him and put my finger in that wound, I will not believe. And the next day, all the disciples were there and Thomas was sitting there. And the Lord said, and the Lord appeared and said, peace be with you, peace be with you. 
And then he said to Thomas, Thomas, come here and put your finger there. And Thomas cried out and said, My Lord, my God. And Jesus turned and said, Thomas, you believe me because your name, uh, because, because you have seen me, because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen me. Blessed are those whose names are not called and yet believe in me. Then I began to wonder, just because I don't get a vision, that means God doesn't want me to have a vision. I began to question God and God said, for some people I have given ready-made vision, for some people I have given a written word and you make a vision on the word the way you want and I will do it for you. So I did not get a dream, I did not get a vision. But I got somebody speak to me on Jogeshwari flyover. 11.30 at night, a person who was suffering from HIV, who got healed, and then he would sit on my bike for six months. We would go to every place, and every time he used to be crying, you are only preaching to good people, you are not preaching to the drug addicts, you are not preaching to the drug addicts. My friends are dying, my friends are dying. And this was his tape every night on my bike. And that night we were praying in tongues, we were coming from Bandra, we reached up to Jogeshwari about uh, 10 kilometers and the anointing hit us right on the flyover and we stopped the bike and lifting our hands we cried out and we said, God, we are ready, we are ready. Tell me Lord, what do you want me to do? I am ready to become pregnant, I am ready to work with the drug addicts and the alcoholics. That's the time God spoke and gave me a dream. It did not come, it came through somebody who irritated me for six months. And that person was suffering from HIV, he got a job in Dubai and he went to Dubai and he is also doing great works of the Lord. So just because you don't get a vision, take the word and make a vision. Take a word and make a dream. Like I used to make a dream, close the door in my early days, look into the mirror. I don't look into the mirror otherwise, praise God. But in those days I would look into the mirror, shut the door especially because I would just come out of you know what. You know what, I would just come out. And if my wife sees me doing some strange things, she will start wondering, he has gone back. So I would shut the door, look into the mirror and I would say, all those people in Africa, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm, I'm talking to you. Is my loud voice clear? I can see you far away. Can you hear me? I, hey, people in Africa, what I was doing 18 years back, I saw it happen last month. And the Lord said, this is the beginning. You made a vision. You must have forgotten it. But I have not forgotten it. I have not forgotten it. I have not forgotten it. When all of you are sleeping at 2.30, I'm talking to the priest there in Africa at night and talking to him about the dream. What is the preparation going on? Because it's a dream. And he has given me a vision. He said, brother, this time every crusade, 30,000. Three crusades, 90,000 people. Sure, he is a priest who is on a vision. I am a person on a vision. We are both like-minded. And the Lord said, when one can take a thousand, two can take 10,000. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 So make a dream. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Wait for it. It will surely come to pass. Right on. Be careful. You know, I'm on the third slide and we got 50 slides to go. And Jocelyn, she came in the morning and she saw me preparing the slides and she turned to me and she said, why are you preparing all the slides? Anyway, you won't go by past five slides. She knows. 
Yeah, yeah, that, that is uh, that is it. Okay. Be careful whom you share your dream with. See, did I say preparation? Now, what are they? Look at my two brothers standing behind. Look, look, look. Look at my two brothers standing behind. Are they prepared? Yes. Hello, are they prepared? Yes. They are only waiting for manifestation. <laughs> this is how it is. Listen, they are prepared, they are waiting, they have done their stuff. The moment the recess bell rings from the gate, they will give you the glasses. They are prepared. Are we also prepared with our stuff, with a vision, with, with a mindset ready to endure? And in the midst of that preparation and waiting, there comes somebody and does some, uh, some nasty work on you. And are you prepared to operate in love? Now when you look at them here, it looks so simple. They have got glasses, they have got one container with a tea in. But talk to me about the person who is putting that wood and in that smoke, it's smoky. He's putting that wood, he's turning around, boiling. And with that boiling thing he has to pour, there is so much of risk. It can, that boiling thing can come on the body. Everything is prepared which you can't see. But all that you can see is the person standing here. In the same way when the preacher is standing, you can't, can't see the way he went through the preparation to get over here. There is a preparation before God can take you on a journey to his destination. But are you ready to go through the preparation? Yes. When the endurance comes, the pressure comes, remember the toothpaste, what comes out? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, wherever you press it, not the paste. No, 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 praise the Lord, praise the Lord, there is the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. That is the beginning, that is the beginning. That is, makes man perfect. Praise God. Be careful whom you share your dream with. Thank God I shared my dream in those days with Brother Alred. We used to talk about the dream. There were others whom with I would talk about the dream. And they said, we are with you, Brother. Thank God. And let me tell you, in this dream coming true, not necessary, people got to have money. In this dream come true, you need people who have got faith, who have got love, who have got Jesus with them. There will always be haters. There will always be haters that will attempt, that will attempt to become, to become dream killers dream killers in your life dream killers in your life but capital letters but now write it in capital letters but they are poison but they are poison cannot stop your purpose but their poison cannot stop your purpose they are poison not promise they are poison you saying promise poison Because when poison comes, how does a person react to the poison? His purpose is destroyed. No, no, no. How does a person react to a poison? His body. But look at Paul. When he was bit by a viper, how did he react? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Can you ask your neighbor, are you a dream killer? With your grumbling, with your murmuring, with your complaining, 
Can you ask your neighbor, please? Shake your neighbor and ask your neighbor, are you a dream clear killer? I, I, I can say without a doubt, thank God for my wife. Listen, listen, listen. Just, just give me two minutes, please. I thank God for my wife. The sacrifice that she does to allow me to go day and night for the kingdom. I don't think so. Any woman would allow that. No, don't clap, don't clap, don't clap. If she had not to allow me, I wouldn't have been here. There is always a price to be paid to follow Jesus. There are some who are involved with Jesus and some who are committed to Jesus. Those who are involved with Jesus, they are part time coming, grumbling, going back, coming, grumbling. Those who are committed are ready to endure anything and everything for Jesus and their life makes a mark in this world. And if she had not to allow me to go, I wouldn't have been here. This 10 days retreat wouldn't have been there. There's a price. It's good to hear. And that's what is endurance. Sacrifice. Sacrifice, not only for your family, but believing that the body of Christ is the family. Because our family is only me, my spouse and my children. When you are in Christ, your family is big. Thank God, God gave me a wife who allows me to go. Praise God. Not selfish. Ready to let a husband go. You need guts. Yeah, she must be going through pain, she must be going through torture. I'm not saying. Even I want to be with my wife. But a price has to be paid. Sorry. God has trained her when I was a bad man. That's why I said, we got to endure all. Because when you go up there, he's not going to ask you, you made your daughter an engineer or a doctor or all that. He's going to ask, uh, ask you, how many souls did you bring into the kingdom? And every one of us have to give an account. Everyone. Think about it. That's why St. Paul says, set your mind on things above. When your mind is set on things above, you are in peace no matter what is all around you. When your mind is set on things of this earth, you are grumbling, murmuring. Our life is just like that. Right now, the power is there, the fans were moving, it was comfortable. The next moment the fan is gone, and the current is gone, the fan is stopped and it's all sweaty, sweaty. And not only sweaty, now comes the hot tea. Now you drink the tea, it makes you more sweaty. But now the question is, I want the tea, but I don't want the sweat. Ah, you got to make a choice. You don't want the sweat, you have to give up the tea. Fantastic teaching. You make a choice. You make a choice. Life is nothing but choices. And, and people who make choices with their minds set above are all the time rejoicing. People who have mind is set on things of the earth, they have everything, but they are grumbling. Those who are grumbling know they should go and visit once, once to Africa and that one sentence will come from your mouth Thank God I was not born in Africa. 
when you understand what god has given you you will appreciate and show gratitude not grumble the very thing that you are grumbling is showing that you are a baby christian still a baby and this is a growth retreat now somebody is praying why doesn't he give a break i am waiting for more sweat to come out hallelujah and i want to see the taste why not we switch off the current for some time even if the current comes let it be switched off my current doesn't go off because it's on the inverter where's that person on the simon where's that person who looks up to the switches keep it off till 1 o'clock see i just said 1 o'clock <gasps> two of them got a shock <gasps> a mind is so so used to comfort and when anything becomes uncomfortable but but i appreciate the sisters look at them when the baby is about to come and there is labor pain there is so much of uncomfort but they are not grumbling thank god you all did not grumble and about us but we men all the time grumbling don't look at me like this <laughs> have you seen any woman going in labor pain grumbling nurses their eyes and their mind is fixed on the baby and we men will be standing outside <laughs> and when all things are over the first question will be what is it boy or a girl no brother i'm not talking about you men Okay, one gentle. You are exception. Praise God. Is isn't it the thought coming, boy or a girl? Hallelujah. No, I'm not talking about you. I didn't say you're talking about me. No, you're doing. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <sighs> Praise God. It's so pleasant. it's getting better and better wow why not we switch it off up till 5 o'clock in the evening yes, yes. yes god yes. yeah but let it be consistent not till 5 o'clock only every day of your life when something is uncomfortable it's challenging you to change you when something is uncomfortable it's challenging you are you ready to endure it with joy are you ready to endure it with peace this is christianity praise god hallelujah praise god all those who want a break say loudly hallelujah hallelujah now we know who wanted who wants the biggest break now we know who wants the biggest break come on praise answer Come on let's take a break praise god